Every show began with a domestic sketch Sid and Coke had played. That was based on life a hell of a lot. It was based on the little quarrels my wife and I had, <clears throat> pro little problems, and we exaggerated actually to make it funny. And so that, that, that always worked. And there I learned that why should somebody interest because I had a little minor problem with Edith over something about guests or something. Then I discovered, great truth for me, what bugs you bugs the world. Identification. The little, little things among, with just people is as important as anything else, and that's where the true humor. So those were the Hickenloopers? The Hickenloopers. Uh, changed their name now and then. That's right. So that was that. I was said once as a joke that if our marriage was perfect, there wouldn't have been any, whatever, any shows. Now, the German professor, I don't remember how it started, but let me give you some of the examples. Um, I remember Sid, myself, and Mel were together at that time working on the show, and the idea was <clears throat> the world's greatest um, engineer. They were all phonies, and he was a phony, he played a phony. So at one point we said, somebody asked him, what was the, what was the most powerful engineering feat you ever performed? He said, straightening out the Tower of Pisa. Oh, how did you do it? Well, first we took powerful ropes. One end we strung around the top of the pizza, and the other end around the hump of 9,000 camels. And the question was, did you straighten out the tower of pizza? No, but we straightened out the camel's humps. So that's it's a marvelous picture. That's an example. Now, movies. There, we made fun of everything, beginning even with the introduction. You know, this movie is dedicated to so and so. We did one, this movie is dedicated to the armed forces, without whom, without whose sacrifices, this would have been in Japanese. That's an example. Acting is the easiest thing in the world to. Sid satirized everybody. He did Milton. He, he did Marlon Brando and, and so on very well. Um, then I, I did show you. I did tell you about the the cliches about the taxi driver. Right. Uh, oh, more about m movies. For instance, the music. It went so loud sometimes. When finally Sid wanted to talk, that's in the movie, and the movie's so loud, he just cuts it off. <laughs> In other words, we say, where's that movie going? Let the man talk, is one, one of the examples of the things we s satirize in movies. Uh, then Western, Shane, did they? Well, anyway, there, I think you have enough examples of no, that. No, no, let's go into it. I mean, there was From okay. Here to Obscurity. Okay. From Here to Obscurity, yeah, it, thanks for This is the biggest example. This is something, the way I put some of the explanation of humor is that satire is satire is making the romantic, turning the romantic into the realistic. That's what it is. Satire is turning the rom uh, romantic into the realistic. Perfect scene. Perfect example. From here to obscurity, there's a scene in a movie where the lady, the star, is on, on the sand, and the Burt Lancaster person is also on the sand. The water is practically touching them. And so isn't it romantic? Two people finding sex under the stars, but then you say, bull. A woman lying down in the, in, in the grass in, in, on sand, you know where the sand will come into? That's that's not romantic, and about the the water, boy, you just just get water in your face during sex, you know, and it it kills it. It's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. It's a ridiculous scene. We did it. We did the scene where Sid and Coker are near the water, and they're talking a lot a love scene, and we had a guys outside with with buckets of water, 
throwing them in their face. And there was the, nobody heard a word, everybody. I think there was one little actual joke about I need a towel or something like that. So that was a, a, what's, what the meaning of satire.